it is Marvel Contest of Champions news for Tuesday the 8th of May 2018. Hopefully you're having a great day, a great start to the week, whatever you're doing, because a lot of people, it's uh, bank holidays over and the UK, we're all back to work. Well, I think in England, I think in Scotland, they don't get it. Anyway, whatever. Hopefully you're having some amazing weather where you are. Um, obviously, if you live in a country where it's constantly cold or it's like it's not very nice, then... I'm sorry. Uh, I'm very sorry. But we've got Marvel Contest of Champions news. We're going to look at potential compensation, which is not compensation, the kind of gift thing. Game downage time, which is just becoming so darn frustrating. And lots of other little stories and also arena-based information. It's Marvel Contest of Champions news. Of course it is. So let's dive into these news stories. We kick things off with game downage. Over the weekend, it hasn't been very good with regards to consistency in the game. I mean, consistency in general is, like I always say, consistency and Marvel Contest Champions are not two things that I associate with one another. And in particular, this weekend was no stranger to that. As we saw game downage, like, and it was the case, like, we have not been given information about, like, you know, what's the deal with this? Kaban always say that they've got the element of transparency with us, but half the time when it comes to things like this, I don't really kind of get what's what's going on. I know in some ways you could say, well, does the game developer owe us any right to let us know what is going on? Well, they're so keen to tell us about transparency, I think it would be nice to know, you know, what is causing this. This is meant to be a very lucrative as well as very popular game from a company that is meant to be incredibly developed. It is, it at times, and I have discussed this with lots of different things in the game, embarrassing to say the least. This then goes hand in hand with the fact that we had emergency maintenance just not about a couple of hours ago so yeah very very disappointing time for the game next up and this is on the forum and we've seen that this particular post talked about hella and hella negating things that happen with brute force now i'm a bit unsure with regards to the correct information for this but it does look like that this is either going to be something to do with act 5 chapter two somewhere or, or maybe it could be somewhere else there's no kind of like great context and it is there has been asked by one of the developers to give context to this like where obviously we're fighting as uh, it looks like it could be an exploit that hella kind of negates this but really hard to say i may have to test this out for myself just to kind of find out and obviously Gabama will probably say this is a, a bug that needs to be fixed but still very interesting to see and even though this has kind of been tipped as an issue obviously Kabam lara wants to find out a little bit more information to see obviously if it pr proves a potential issue but like I said, I'm probably going to test this out myself and uh, and see what the lay of the land is. Next up is a post by Haunted Memory, and this one in particular talks about his kind of time in the game, people's kind of general thoughts, uh, his like friends that are now longer no longer in his alliance, and other kind of like things where it makes him kind of question about going forward based on things like level cap. And that is something obviously a lot of people have called out, you know, why are we still at level 60? Other games would have had to increase the level cap by now and in correspondence. But no, we've, we've stayed the same for quite a while. So, yeah, what's the deal with this? Are we going to go any further than level 60? But there was a response by Caban Mike. Caban Mike says that even though it's not something on the agenda of the developers and kind of the whole game's kind of mission that they're going to be doing that it's something in the future they will have to address they are talking about things with regards to like scaling things with regards to mastery points and by increasing the level cap will it have issues with the stuff that they've put in at the moment obviously if they increase the level cap and there was better masteries on offer yeah okay people will be able to smash through a lot of content a lot more easily and that would be good and imply well with regards to a harder grind to get up to higher levels so yeah i do think it's something that should happen in the future i don't obviously understand uh, kind of get the longevity of the game like will it go to a point where we have to wait another two years for it will the game last two years i really think that by this time we should have had all these kind of like bugs and uh, and, and things that make the game just so unplayable for times in that it just shouldn't, shouldn't be a case but either way hopefully in the next year or so we actually see some kind of development with this kind of whole level cap thing Okay, I just want to follow up on a post which is all about Alliance War Season 2. Now, we covered this on Marvel Contest of Champions News a little while ago with regards to, like, what Alliance leaders do and officers do and players within Alliances do when you are aware or find out about someone that is breaking terms of service. And this is a very difficult situation, especially because it affects a lot of people within that Alliance. If you work with your friends and you're in an Alliance and someone does something that then changes things like your alliance rating and other things that then affect you getting some decent prizes at the end of the month from the season war completion then you're like hey that's completely unfair and we talked about like why 
or if anything, Kabam could do something to kind of help out those or communicate with those and say, hey, you've got someone in your alliance that has been you stipulated as one of those people and obviously that will affect you but it wouldn't affect you in a so negative way as it is affecting a lot of players and their alliances now this has been given a response by kabam on the subject of kabam mike mentions that it's all about obviously breaking terms of service and kind of policies and right at the end says something about uh alliances having responsibility for who they let in yeah, okay, I wanna, um, I, I've decided that I'm gonna put in uh, King John Un into my alliance. Um, I don't know it's Kim John Un. Uh, I don't know that he's gonna do anything, you know, untoward, but I'm gonna invite him into my alliance and yeah, just see see what happens, you know, just for shits and giggles. Because, like, that, that, that's, that's like, that's, mon I can monitor that, yeah. At the end of the day, that may be a little bit of a rude point by me, but just to kind of, like, say that it's not always easy to understand like people that are breaking those terms of service maybe like people in alliance don't know that it's been has been broken and that can then cause a ripple effect within an alliance and then theoretically split it up based on those facts and it's then like all those kind of relationships that you build with like friendships and stuff uh, are then out the window and you then have to start again it's a very negative affair especially when uh, you start off in the game you're trying to find an alliance and a reliable alliance and grow with an alliance because that's one thing that i wanted to do i joined one alliance tried to grow with them i tried to grow, go to a competitive one it didn't work out and now i'm back to one that's a little bit kind of like on the competitive side of things but not so much that i don't lose my life which is incredibly important i need my life Next up, we've got the results of round one, and I got it way wrong, I think, with regards to my predictions. Actually, I think I got the Nebula one kind of close-ish with regards to the five-star one, uh, and way off for the Morning Star and way off for uh, the four-star Nebula. But either way, these were actually really positive to see. We saw a lot lower with regards to the four-star, which is great. I actually picked up a lot more five-star shards than I usually do, which is incredibly positive. I kind of wish that I went for the five-star version, especially going for about 20 mil and uh, even like the the kind of threshold below usually going for about 11 mil for the 2005 star shards and really wish i went for it because it was uh, 9.1 mil uh which you know is, is two mil off which would have been great to have and then morning start going for 2.2 mil fantastic champion thought she would be a lot more well uh, kind of grinded out for that one but it's still really good and really refreshing to see those lower cutoffs and obviously these weren't brand new champions this week these were kind of uh, just the random featured and also then obviously a random uh, a random entry from morning start and uh, there's still the rumblings about when we're eventually going to see blade but some people say they will never will and some people say hey it's going to be next time i don't know i'm just not gonna I'll, I'll, as soon as it's like announced I would say about it, but still really good to see some lower cutoffs. And this then brings us on to our next arena. Obviously, we have got Captain America Infinity War. And if I'm going to hazard a guess with regards to this one, I probably think we're going to be not as popular as obviously with Proxima Midnight, not the round two Proxima Midnight, but you know, if we're looking close to like Corvus, Corvus Glaive, anything between about 30 and 40 mil, I'll stick my neck out on the line with regards to that one. And then Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler I reckon could go for anything between 1.8 to 2 mil, something around those lines. I don't think he's going to be as popular as I think we'd expect him to be. I think he's just going to be a lot less popular. But I could be incredibly wrong. We could, could see like something close to like Falcon, anything between like 1.5 to 1.7 mil. It's really difficult. I'd say about 2.2 mil to be safe with that one, or even 2.4. If it goes anything higher, man, I think I'd I'd eat my hat. And finally, let's talk about compensation. Now, <laughs> it's not compensation because this has been a merged set of threads with regards to the forum. If you go and you find plenty of information. And people have been receiving random gifts. So if you're kind of going, like, hey, why is my my alliance may received a random gift? Uh, not many people in my alliance have. Uh, there's a good chunk of them, but others not so. There's something that says something about defeating Thanos, and people are then going, right, okay, something to do with the previous uh, this kind of like running event at the moment with regards to like. Is it uncollected? As soon as you've done that, that means that you eventually get a special gift. Is it completely at random? And the answer is it is at random and it is not compensation. To give you an idea, of the last, uh, well, three and a half years of me playing, I have not received one of these special gifts. I am not a special person, so therefore I don't receive a gift. 
anyway, whatever. But the fact is that kind of gives you an idea. It's at random. You may get it one day. I may get it one day as well. Um, but hey ho, that gives you the answer there. No compensation. It's just a random gift for certain summoners. So that's been Marvel Contest Champions news for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe for more Marvel Contest Champions based content. I'm probably going to be live streaming at the point in this video going live. So come along, hang out and all that lovely stuff and uh, ask questions and all those things. And yeah, as always, I shall catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye for now.